I do think that, that like your views on things are a little bit differently. This reminds me of one of the first times that like we met. And I was talking about like using reward systems for productivity, and, and you said to me, "Yeah, man. Like sometimes, like when I'm really working on a page." I like won't pee, and then like, and then like my reward is that I get to go to the bathroom if I finish the page. And I'm like, what? No, that that's not the same at all. I'm talking about getting to play video games. <laughs> let, let, let me explain. Music got the best in me. Ever since I was a child. Uh, here's a setup. Uh, this time lapse, I used it in my recent how to video for how to use masking layers or layer masks. But um, in order for people to see the entire thing, this thing is 17 hours long. This is uh, inks, colors, uh, minus pencils. Somehow the inks and colors took 17 hours. So who knows how long the pencils took. Um, I managed to shrink the time lapse down to what did we say it was uh two and a half hours i think something like that <laughs> two and a half hours i was able to make it shorter but like it was so fast like i was getting dizzy watching it right so this is the fastest i could get this time lapse without it being dizzy yeah i mean really what you're gonna need to do is just draw faster next time Yes, yes. And you should just, you know, and then, and, but I mean, I, really, you're being kind of kind, because, like, you could just play it at 17 hours. Like, no, people aren't doing anything else right now. <laughs> so they need 17 hours worth of entertainment, right? Break it up into different episodes for yourself. Yeah, note, note taken. Um, so, yeah, so that, that that's the setup. This yeah. is a 17-hour video clip that I've managed to edit down to two and a half hours. So... I figured uh, I can't find an audio track that long that won't be annoying. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm breaking it up into three parts, about 45 minutes each. And I figured the best way to fill up airtime is for us to talk. And the best person I can think of who's really good at talking is Anthony Falcone. So this is Anthony. That's Anthony Falcone. Hey, everybody. Yeah. I'm very excited to be here. To... <laughs> Uh, this feels so awkward. <laughs> so, um, for, for those of you who don't know, I am a writer. I have had the fortune of knowing Francis for about eight years now. Um, we uh, first met at the Raid Studio, and we got to work together there. And uh, really, uh, we you know got a chance to travel the world together, and we always talk shop and talk creative things. So uh, this is actually like a pretty exciting. This is the, basically the, a lot of this is just our normal conversations that we would have anyway. But now you get to listen to us while uh, you're watching a time lapse of Batman. Yeah. So what I'm going to do right now is like I'm going to superimpose like stuff that Anthony worked on. So I'm going to point in like okay. different directions, and then like I'll 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 edit it in. So Very I'll be good. like. <laughs> <laughs> so. so it, it, I feel like these conversations will get better by the time we get to the second or third one. Yeah, um, by the time we're done this, it'll be awesome. Yes, the, the first one is likely to be awful, but uh, you're all here for it, so yeah. that's your fault. Yeah, for the next 45 minutes. Okay, so now that we've set up what this thing yeah. is, uh, every episode, by every episode, this, this is going to be broken up into three parts. We're going to pick a subject. And uh, the, episode, the, the subject for the first episode is going to be uh, – what, what was it? We were going to be talking about being creative in a quarantine life. 
Yeah, like, well, or just like being creative in, in like a, a, a crisis, right? I think that like a lot of times, and, and some of the subsequent things we'll talk about might be just more specific ideas about productivity and how we work, but really, and this has been mentioned a lot, but we are kind of in this unprecedented time right now. You know, j just before we, we were on the call, Francis and I were talking about needing to wash our groceries, like before we, you know, like th this is a odd time. And with that brings additional stress. And with additional stress, it's kind of hard to create. And so what do you do, right? How do you stay productive? How do you manage to keep on creating? during this wild time of quarantine that, that we're all in. And there, there are simple answers, right? And that like, you know, uh, you and I have, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I think that, that, that like we have a pretty similar attitude towards work and that like, we don't view creative stuff as magic. Like we, we don't wait for a muse to come by, you know, but we do, <laughs> Um, always uh, um, want to make it that, that, that you know, that, like you, you do the work. You, you do work. It's just exactly like anything else. Right? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I, I moved my screen on top of your face just to see what it would look like. <laughs> so I was attempting the lip sync. No, I, I, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a pretty crazy. Let, let's start with uh, where, I don't want to say where are you, because then you know, like uh, okay, so let, let's 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 set this up. If if this was yeah. a story, let's uh, what what's okay. what's your day to day now? What's your day to day? Right. What are you doing? So so I I have the fortune, but also the the difficulty of having a day job separate from my creative writing job. So already I always need to be really really diligent and find time to make sure where where I I can write. Um, I normally live in a pretty small condominium in downtown Toronto uh, with uh, my wife and two two young daughters, and so. Now we, we we actually kind of got out to to the uh, burbs and are staying with my parents who've been here for about five weeks and everybody has their own little section of the house to to, to do work in, um, but we're not necessarily in like the ideal creative situation to be able to you know think about stories and crank it out and and that's kind of the, the hard part right is that you you don't need a perfect atmosphere to be able to write or to be able to draw, but you do need a good atmosphere to be able to think about what you're going to write and what you're going to draw, right? Like, mm -hmm. like there, like, like for, for you, right? Like the the most thinking that, that you kind of do comes basically at like the layout stage, right? Or like we're working on thumbnails, you're trying to lay out a cover, right? Like that's when you're really, really thinking and planning, right? Like is that? Yeah. Fair statements, you know? Yeah, no, that, that that's a fair statement. Like uh, when I'm laying out a book, I, I can't, I can barely listen to music. It, I need just pure concentration because I'm I'm playing out the the visuals of the story, right? So it's it's like I'm playing a movie in my head, and if I listen to anything else or uh, specifically like a podcast or or music where there's lyrics, those words start entering my mind. And, you know, so I try to keep that stuff out. But, um, but yeah, I, I think the, you know, just, just to set things up for, for my scenario as well. Uh, I, you know, I live in a house with my partner and my daughter and uh, I'm Rachel's sister is also here. And up until last week, Rachel's other sister and her and our niece was here so i think that at, at one point in time there were four adults and two kids three dogs also uh so it, it's it it was pretty difficult to work at home and luckily i i do have a studio that i share with uh tri vuong and uh, Dylan Burnett. Uh, and what we've been doing actually is we would text in the morning and we would say, hey, I'm going into the studio. And then we would kind of plan it 
out so that way if I went to the studio, maybe they won't go or vice versa. Right. Right. But right now the schedule has been, I, I, I think try has basically <laughs> had the studio to himself every single day. Yeah. I, I, I came in once this week and it was on Sunday. Right. And it was, it's basically empty. Now we can work together at the same time because like where my desk is, you know, you, you've been there, Anthony, Anthony helped me yeah. move by the way. Um, my, area is like a good what 20 feet away from him right you know so we do have the separation but you know even though i find it difficult to concentrate and work at home uh you know once you kind of get into the not not even the rhythm once you get kind of comfortable you know yeah i kind of yeah. become sedentary it's interesting too because I I, th I think that the, there's sort of two two bits of, of like difficulty. One is that with home there's lots of distractions because there's stuff going on and you want to see your kids and you want to see your partner and there's, there's everything that happens right. And that in and of itself is enough of a hill to climb. It's essentially the reason why a lot of us got studios in the first place, yeah. right? Because we wanted this dedicated space outside of our home where, where we can work, right? Um, but beyond that, I think that now, like, like, I mean, maybe it was about three weeks ago, I had just a normal cough. <laughs> but man, is that stressful. Right? Yeah. I'm so stressed because yeah. I cough and I'm like coughing into my arm and I don't want to make anybody else sick and I'm checking my temperature every like hour. Yeah. Kind of thing, right? did, did you hide it from everybody for no. like an hour just to be like, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I wasn't like, like. It's like, you know, like the, the guy that gets movie. bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the zombie movie. No. <laughs> but, but I think that like when when we have this added stress now of like because we're we're worried about our our parents we're worried about yeah. our friends we're worried about you know like like it, it all, a lot of us have family who are frontline workers in healthcare um, maybe others of us have have sort of you know lost work like uh, right now the comic book industry is in total upheaval mm -hmm. you know some people are having the fortune to still be able to, to work on certain projects some people have had their projects paused some people have had projects canceled altogether like, like I, I uh, had three pitches that I'm working on and so it's been like sort of hard to motivate yourself to to keep working on you know stuff that you're like well will this will this happen ever now we mm -hmm. want this right mm -hmm. um but i felt like the the trickier thing and is just like the what when you're dealing with with sort of worry or or, or other thoughts or other things that, that are creeping on you that's when i find it's hard to do the real like thinking creative work mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's easier when you're like, well, but I have to do it so I can pay my rent and put food on the table. Right. Like, like, though, like that's a pretty big motivator for, for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's still like you, you, you feel kind of like you're almost wading through peanut butter at, at times. Right. You're just kind of really, really pushing through. Mm -hmm. right? like, like, and the thing is that you, you know, had to deal with a lot more stress and working than than like I had just just over the years just in general right like, like I, I feel like you've had like a series of more bouts of, of uh, stress and like I mean what do you do I guess then to really kind of push through I, I think the motivation is is directly tied to what you're passionate about yeah so you know, I think the only way to really get through this and, and, and still be creative is essentially to apply a workman-like attitude, you know? Yeah. Um, what was it? I, th I think there's like a – is it an Einstein quote or I can't remember? Or maybe it's um, – what's his name? Uh, the, the Is it Thomas Edison, the guy who invented the light? Yeah. I, I think he had a yeah. – I think he had a quote where it says something like uh, – I'm, I'm completely paraphrasing. I think it's basically to the effect of um, uh, luck or inspiration is essentially uh, sometimes we don't see it because 
uh, or you know what it is? Sometimes we don't see opportunity because it's disguised in overalls and uh, work gloves and work boots, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, essentially, you you work. You know, I think yeah. that's what 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 a lot of people kind of forget, right? Is and, and you know, don't get me wrong. Like it's this isn't a perfect system because no, like no. you know, I I haven't exactly been amazingly productive but what i've been doing is the thing that i've been more productive on is you know there's been more videos on this channel now yeah, because yeah. essentially i've been focusing on what i think is fun and i'm hoping that what i think is fun carries on to my real work now luckily when when i do have stuff that i do i i sit down and i do them but the way things have been shaking down because of the all of the what i guess clo closures or like there's yeah. a lot of like yeah. like diamonds not distributing yeah, uh yeah. stores yeah. aren't open yeah. so th there's no real sense of expediency really for anybody to just go gangbusters on stuff so we're still working but the deadline monkey is definitely not it's not clawing at our back well, and, and the thing is, like, there there is expediency if if companies are able to pay you when you finish. Sure. But but if a company is telling people, hey, slow down your work because you know that then in essence, like, they I was looking at my so I'm I'm pretty you know like number oriented and goal oriented when it comes to what I want to to write and, and read throughout the year. So I always have a goal of how many books I'm going to read and, and, and what I'm going to write every year. Mm -hmm. And I'm behind right now in where I want it to be. Like Generally in, in December every year, you know, I, I plan for the next year. It's, it's not unusual that one woman would be behind because I feel like you should always shoot more than you can actually do. But I'm quite a bit behind where I want to be because it has been a lot harder to work. Mm -hmm. Both because in, in the early part of the year, I, I was uh, selling a house. And then and then after that, then all the COVID-19 stuff happens and you're in quarantine, you're doing other stuff, and you're working hard in other ways. And you're just like, I mean, you're like quarantine with children is not boring. Right, like, 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 it's not. Yes. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm never sitting here. Saying, I am so bored. I wish I had more to do. Right. Yeah. That, that never occurs. Right. With children. Um. But now I've had to really kind of figure out. Okay. Well, because I'm relatively good about being self motivated to begin with, and part of it is because I don't. I'm not too precious with my stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I'm. I'm a really firm believer in you need to get a crummy first draft. Like, like it's way better to have a finished thing that's garbage than to have the best thing ever only done at 10%. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, I had a, uh, th there is a short story that I just finished up a, a third draft. So I, I don't share anything with anybody until I get to a third draft, right? Th third draft is always when I feel comfortable about sharing with people. And so in January, I did the first draft of a short story uh, that I'm working on with Gibson Quarter and uh, eight pages comics. I did it. No problem. And then it kind of just like, you know, like just sat there at the first draft stage for like two months. And last week I made myself do the second draft. And today I made myself finish that third draft. And like, it's kind of, you know how when you don't go to go to the gym for a while, but then you go to the gym and you feel really good. And you're like, yeah, I can totally see definition. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel right now about my writing. I'm like, yeah. look at me. I wrote eight pages today. Bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you feel good. You have a finished thing, which then you can build upon. Right? Yeah. So have you been working? During this time, so so you yeah. still do your work, work, and then are you are you still hitting the the pages? Because I know so like if if any of you guys know Anthony, uh, he's he's very meticulous with numbers. It's funny that I'm I'm talking like oh he's like like as if you're not in the room, but <laughs> but you know you're 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 very meticulous with numbers. And and one of the things I remember is that you're always kind of like oh you know this week I I, I wrote x amount of words or I wrote. X amount of pages, yeah. you know, and, and to yeah. me that's very interesting because that's that's not necessarily how I think, you know. Sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, I, I wrote nothing, but it's all in my head. <laughs> but right, but right. you know what? That 
all in your head doesn't count, right? No, Until you write it down. Yeah, I I have this app that I use called Coach Me, mm-hmm. um, and it's a it's a really simple app. But basically, you just get to set daily goals, right? Yeah. And I have three goals to myself. I say like, did did I read today? Did I write today? And did I exercise? Mm-hmm. And those are the three things that I just hit yes or no on this app before I go to bed. And then, and then I can look on a calendar and see the chain, right? You don't break the chain, is the whole mm-hmm. thing, right? But I mean, like, you know, I'm. I don't read every day. I don't write every day. Re- reading, I'm actually pretty good at about reading at, at every day. Like I tend to get through about 30 books a year. So like I'm, I'm yeah. pretty good at that. But like the writing has been like relatively sparse lately. And I, and, and it's, and, and it's a muscle and you want to get back at it. You want to, you know, but, but and some of it really is because, you know, if, if all of your brain power is being used up in like, ordering groceries online and figuring out when you got to pick this up and making sure you have a face mask and making sure that everybody's okay and then heading outside and doing your one walk around a day and all that. Like by the time you, you may, maybe, you know, the kids are to bed, you're there at nine 30, 10 o'clock, man, you do not feel like writing. Like that is not a time when you're yeah. like testing out the keyboard. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So like that, that part's been true. Like do do you find that, that, that like you're still drawing and like working at, at like specific times a day or do you kind of like fit it in whenever you can? So here's the thing. Like my schedule has been completely, completely blown out of the water. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, for, for, you know, for, for a long time, I you know, when, when we used to share a studio together, often you, you know, you would come in, uh, at the end of your work day and you'd swing by and I'd still be there. And then it was regular for us to be there till like nine or 10, Yeah. you know, and I would say in the last year, I'm going to work my way backwards. Right. Um, in the last year I have somehow successfully, turn myself in a, into a nine to five artist, you nice. know, and, and there's a very specific reason for that, you know, like Anthony, you know, and I were, we're both dads. Right. And I think for the first year and a half to two years of, of being a dad, it was pretty difficult because, um, I either mostly worked from home. And when I say worked from home, I basically kind of just, lingered around you know so like i was basically always at uh her beck and call and you know as a dad there's always something that needs to be done right i i I don't think i've been to walmart as much as i have my entire life uh until like the first year of being a dad right and you know i it was difficult for me to uh, piecemeal my work in that, you know, like an hour here and then stop, stop, stop. And then an hour there. Right. You know, so f- between like 7 AM until like, I don't know, uh, five when the work day ends, I, I might've only gotten an hour and a half in and then that hour and a half might've been spread out. So I think the first couple of years, uh, I wouldn't start work until, uh, geez, I don't know, like, eight or nine once she's asleep and even then exactly like what you said i'm, I'm exhausted I, yeah. I, I don't want to you know it's it's too too difficult right so that's i mean that's actually one of the the reasons why uh i i you know i that, that's a story for another time but there's there's a reason why uh I'm not sharing a studio with Anthony anymore because I, I wanted, I needed to make some, some changes in my life structure. So now the, the new studio that I'm in, I'm able to get there in 15 minutes. I'm always driving against traffic, right? On a good day, 12 minutes before I was driving literally from one side of the city all the way to the other. I live in the East side, studio is in the West side. Now my studio is also in the East side. And if I, when I go there, it's, it's against traffic. So I think on a good day, the other place 30 30 minutes 30 40 minutes on a bad day it might take like an hour right yeah so i found myself in order to maintain uh a a commute that wasn't like ridiculous i would essentially i'd either have to go to the studio by like 7 8 a.m before before people are on the roads or i'd come to the studio at 10 or 11 a.m once people are already at work 
So, but the thing is, if I go to work at 11, it means, well, I'm not coming home till 8 or 9 p.m. I don't, I don't want to do that. That's, that's yeah. the entire day. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to see my kid at all. Right. So maintaining this nine, these nine to five hours, I'm, I'm able to have a work life balance. And the thing is, is that it sounds like super rigid. By the way, I think we just got an answer to your question. Uh, it sounds super rigid. Like, you know, like, oh, you're, you're an artist. Uh, you, you've escaped the nine to five yeah, grind. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I, I think you need that nine to five because, you know, when I, when I get to the studio, I'm, I'm eager to work. I want to yeah. get it and I want to get it done as fast as possible so I can get home as quickly as possible. But it, I'm not like working like with a frame of thought where I want to leave. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's just I've just become more efficient with my time. So when I'm when I'm sitting there in the studio, I'm not goofing around as much. You know, what I mean, I'm just straight up working. So it, it yeah. feels much more focused and concentrated. And then when I'm at home, I'm I'm just at home. That's it. Yeah. You know, I think when I work from home and this is the difficult thing now, which is, as you know, work is sporadic throughout the entire day. So when when I'm hanging out, I feel like I should be working. And then when I'm working, I feel like I should be hanging out. So when I'm working from home, work days are longer. I'm working till like two, three in the morning. Yeah. Right. But when I maintain a nine to five schedule, I'm only working till five, you know, and in, in fact, I actually set up an alarm on my phone uh, yeah. for 530, which is like, hey, it's it's 530. Go home, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because because the thing is, is that, you know, by the end of the day, I don't want to leave because I'm like, man, you know, I, I really enjoy this job and I really enjoy my 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 workspace and the relative solitude that it gives me. But then when I get home, I'm also really glad I'm home. You know what I mean? So it's 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 perfect because I'm 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 happy to stay, but I'm also happy to leave. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and that of course, has been, and, and I think that's like that for a lot of people. Like one yeah. of the usefulness of the nine to five, even though it may, maybe it, like it has this, you know, uh, like kind of it, it's it's synonymous yeah. with, with like drudgery sometimes, mm -hmm. but. The good thing about when that 5 p.m. hits is your work day is done. And as long as you can separate that out and compartmentalize it, then you can enjoy the other aspects of your life. Yeah. And now everything's blended together. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So like in, 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 in a long-winded way, although this is perfect, uh, the, I, the answer is essentially structure. It's finding yeah. structure within your day. Right, because it's it's like you know when you watch that 2001 Odyssey, right? Like that guy's trapped in that uh, spaceship, yeah, and yeah. it's kind of like man, it's boring. But he he created a structure for himself, right? Yeah. So essentially, when you're working from home during like you know this lockdown, it's trying to figure out structure, right? Now I, I, we're still figuring it out. We're still figuring it out, you know, because right now it's it's a work in progress right because even even just the simplest things like like you said like getting the gro getting groceries is is now a three four hour event yeah you know it's not it's not like before like oh you know what we we, we need to make dinner so we're just going to run to the store real quick and come home like no you know because you're now you're going to go there you're going to line up and then just to get in, you know, it, it's kind of like lining up to go to like a club or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know it's quite yeah. Complete with like a bouncer and everything, and then when you get home, because I'm OCD, like I wash everything that we bought, right? Like the cans, the 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 food, even the the bag of bread. I'll 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 just I have a trick, you know, where I'll grab it from the top and I'll twist it. And then I'll I'll quickly soap it like this, and then spray it with water, right? So that way the handle. And then, while it's still twisted, I'll turn it upside down so that the water doesn't get in. Oh. Then I'll spray that and I'll soap it. And then this is the key part. I'll take the little tab, right? Then I'll I'll yeah. soap that, and I'll put it back oh. on, right? And the milk the milk cartons, you know every. Kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, uh, yes, yes, it's crazy. <laughs> We've established that I'm I'm probably crazy, uh, and then like the 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 milk carton, you know. Look, everybody 
on a daily basis, you, you touch that thing, you open it. Right. Yeah. So I wash that too. I soap it. Right. And then in my cupboards, like the, the, the very top part, that's the food that I'm too lazy to wash. So I'm going to quarantine it for three days. Right. And then the lower it goes, it's like, okay, this is the stuff that's been in here for at least three days. I can use it. And uh, the funny thing is, is that Rachel and her sister, they're, they're mad about chips. They gotta have chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about snacks. So we would we got, also yeah. wash those bags of chips. Sure. Right. And like, I, I think I remember the last time I went grocery shopping, there was at one point there were 11 bags of chips on our grocery right. cart and I'm like you, th- you think we have enough you know never can have enough chips <laughs> I, I mean I I will say that that, that, in, that in these situations too and this kind of connects back to yeah being creative and working creative is that you know wh- while we in general want to try to have moderation in all things mm-hmm. the the little joys that so like if video games bring you a bit of joy if chips bring you a bit of joy if like you know doing like w- w- whatever sort of puzzle or fun thing helps mm-hmm. you i do think that a lot of times reward systems work pretty well for 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 people so like if i you know finish writing 500 words then i get to play an hour of video games if i right. like, like those kind of things I, I think help a lot for people and i think that and you and I'll probably talk more about this next time when we talk about like just the, our creative processes in general, mm-hmm. but getting something done during the day is better than getting nothing done, right? Like, like if you're a comic artist, maybe you wanted to draw a whole page and you only drew a whole panel, doesn't matter. That whole panel is done, right? That, that was better than drawing nothing that day. And if you're writing, hey, if you wrote a paragraph a day in a year, you'd have a book. People don't write a book every year. Right. So like, like small daily applications of your craft really do add up mm-hmm. even during crazy times like this. One of the, I mean, one of the toughest things essentially uh, during this is that like, you know, the, the, the structure that we have on our day is completely, yeah. di- completely different now. Right. Like yeah. what is, um, so I, I, so I, I guess what I'm saying is like when we were asking a question earlier, how has it really affected your life on like a mundane thing right so yeah. for me like i was just saying like the way we do groceries is so difficult now sure. right and speaking of small wins and i i, I this is so funny it really re- it, it really makes me think that we're living in a in a dark uh universe alternate universe of our reality so and this is obviously a good thing. When when I when Rachel and I went to go grocery shopping, uh, now I know that it's probably better when it's just one rather than two. But it just so happened that that we both had to leave to go do something, right? So we went to go grocery shopping, and they only had a limited amount of um, cart um, when they check out. They take it away and they clean it up, right? Yeah. So it means that there's a limited amount of carts to use. Right. So I was carrying two baskets and Rachel's carrying one. Now, again, mind you, we were shopping for six people. Yeah. Right. You know, and I was just dying with everything I was carrying. Right. And, you know, I remember asking the manager, like, are there any more cars? And he's like, sorry, you know, we're clean. I'm like, I, I understand. Right. So we were, there's still stuff that we needed, but we, we, Uh, I guess, whittled it down to the bare essentials, right? And even then, some of the bare essentials are heavy, like canned food is heavy, pasta is heavy, rice is heavy, right? So I'm just carrying all this stuff. And, uh, you know, I, you could tell that we were both getting tense. Like, you know, when, when you and Katie are just about to get into an argument, and it's not even so much that you're arguing about something, it's just more because you're both kind of uh, having to endure <laughs> uh, an inconvenience, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was getting kind of testy, and I was kind of like, "Ah, oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm I'm really sick of carrying this, but you know, let's just let's just keep going." And then when I put it down, we're like, oh, "What else do we need?" Right? And I remember we were standing there, we were like, "Okay, we have a choice: we either get this or that." Right? It, it was like, "Are we going to get a bag of potatoes?" Right. right. Are we going to get a bag of potatoes? So anyway, so we, we, we put it down and then I said, you know what, let's go to the front, see if you can find a car, right? Just just see, right? Yeah. yeah. So Rachel 
did. And, uh, you know, because I, I was staying with all our, our baskets of food. And she f- came back with a cart. And I and I felt like, oh, my God. Like, I felt like like I was, like, falling to my knees again. Like, like you know, like that zombie movie where they're, like, walking through, like, like shells of a city. And then they yeah, found, yeah. like, one can of soda and they're all like yeah and then they have like a party that night around this one soda that they're all sharing right so i was like i i was so happy to see her walking with a cart that i was like my my kingdom for a cart you know (laughs) and that meant that we could now get that potato and shop some more right so that's how we ended up with like i think 11 bags of chips on our cart you know, because now we had room. We had room. The car. We had room. You, you know what this reminds me of? Because I, I do think that, like, your when, – when you, when you talk about, like, enjoying the small things and being so excited about having a cart, mm-hmm. I do think that, that, like, your views on things are a little bit differently. This reminds me of one of the, <laughs> of, of, like, one of the first times that, like, we met. And I was talking about, like, using reward systems for productivity. And, and, and you said to me, yeah, man, like, sometimes – like when I'm really working on a page, I like won't pee, and then like, and then like my reward is that I get to go to the bathroom if I finish the page. I'm like, what? No, that that's not the same at all. I'm talking about getting to play video games and watch TV shows. And you're like, my reward is peeing. This is gonna be the intro. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, did did I not pump out? A hell of a lot of issues of the Flash. There's a lot of, a lot of Flash issues. <laughs> no, okay. L- l- let me, l- let me. Only one or two <laughs> l- l- let me explain this theory. It's it's not as crazy as it sounds. And you know what's funny is that uh, there's this uh, show on Netflix called uh, I think like one one hundred or something like that. Uh, not the hundreds, but like I think it's one hundred, where they uh, take like a hundred people and coop them up in like this facility. And yeah. these comedians essentially run social scientific tests on people, like right. like like literally one of them was was things like uh, uh, this teacher was like, hey, you know, I find that I can concentrate better wh- or get my task done quicker when when I need to pee and I and I don't, you know, and so you know they 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 through the laws of average they'll they'll do this test on a hundred people, right? Right. So they sectioned off half people like, hey, you guys. Here's a bunch of beverages. You guys don't get to pee, and then you guys get to take as much pee as you want. And then they made them like play Jenga with each other. Right. All right. right. Anyways, so, uh, I'm gonna save the result of that until I tell my part. Uh, so why I do it? It wasn't so much that you know, friggin' uh, what do you call it, uh, sadomasochistic about my urinary activities, <laughs> but it's more. Like when I'm sitting there, like, okay, let's say I'm drawing a panel, right? And, you know, maybe there's just 30 minutes left in it, right? Now, sometimes one of the things that artists do when they're close to finishing is they start procrastinating. They start finding new things to to fiddle with, right? Or sometimes when when we have too much time, that's when – we start uh, thinking about all our options, right? And we start thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And then you become overwhelmed by options that you don't do any of them or, or you just become super slow, right? Essentially, your your decision-making is too slow, right? Yeah. But when I got to pee, my decision-making is really fast because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not messing around, right? Which is, it's kind of like if you say, are, are we going to go left or right? You know, if, if, I, if I didn't have to pee, I'd be like, I don't know, what's on the left side? Okay, well, what's on the right side? But if I got to pee, it's like, nope, right, left, right. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just walking, right? Sure. You know, I'll, I'll deal with the consequence yeah. of, of what direction, where this direction led me, right? So essentially, when I'm drawing this thing that, that I might have half an hour on, right? I might actually draw in like 12 minutes, 15 minutes. I, I can cut down the time in half because my decision making yeah, is yeah. going faster, right? So... And so then, you know, this panel that might take half an hour, it's done in 15 minutes. Now what? Now I can go pee, right? So that that's why I did it. So everybody right? needs to know that all of your favorite Flash comics <laughs> was are, that? are drawn in twice the time 
because of the size of this man's bladder. <laughs> that's that's key. Yes, that 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 is key. It's key. By the way, just to finally give you the answer on that scientific test, it was scientifically proven that. What do you think is the answer? That people can concentrate better when they have to pee. No, they couldn't. They couldn't tell. It was 50-50. There you go. <laughs> the answer was they like, they couldn't prove it. They couldn't prove that it was yeah. going to improve because it's it's very much based on the individual, right? Because sure. you, you know what it is. I I think that what what led me the to have the ability to make decision make making decisions faster when I'm drawing is is experience, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas perhaps if I was inexperienced and you're telling me to make a decision faster, I'm going to mess up. And then I'm going to have to right. redraw that page later, thus taking yeah, yeah, longer. Yeah. Right. You know, so anyway, so anyway, I don't do that anymore. I don't do that no. anymore because, no. you know, uh, the thing is, is that like, you know, I, I've kind of, uh, I'm kind of like in a, in a pretty fortunate position where a lot of the books I'm working on uh, are not crazy deadlines. I, th there's a reason why I haven't been on a monthly grind yeah, in a yeah. long time because, you know, man's got to pee. I can't be holding oh. my pee for. And also now you know you have a nice <laughs> setup, right? You have a bathroom just around the corner from me right now, so you know there's a lot, uh, lot going on. Yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. But in in any case, so I, like for me now, I, I would say my, my reward system was when I was going uh, to the studio. So for, for again, I've successfully turned into a nine to five artist going yeah. to the studio, and you know this whole thing kind of messed that up. But what I used to do is um, on Mondays, I kind of put the reward in front, right, yeah. rather than at the end because I know some people are like, hey, I'm going to do this. So I'm one of those people where I'll reward myself and because I feel guilty about rewarding myself, I'll work my ass off, <laughs> right. right? So on Mondays are my – whatever I want days. I would still go to the studio. I would do like the, the nine to five thing or eight to five or whatever. But on that days, I would work on whatever I wanted to work on. Right. And then Tuesday to Friday, I would work on my real work. Okay. Right. So I, I like that system, you know, yeah. because on Monday I was essentially tapping into my, my creative juices. Right. And, and the, it, creative juices, by the way, is a really weird way to describe things, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's essentially it. You know, it's, it's essentially structuring it that way. You know, okay. you almost uh, yeah, almost I, time. I, I, I think it's uh, dinner time here. You know. Yeah. But I think uh, that it worked pretty well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We'll be able to take a look at it and see, and then we can figure out some. Uh, uh, another time for it. This was fun, though, man. This was good. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so th this was part one with Anthony Falcone, and just just shooting the S, right? You know, shooting the P. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then thanks thanks for doing this. By the way, I, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you helping me fill in the airtime. And uh, hopefully people kind of got something out of this. And you know what? I It'll probably take me a while to post this up. Maybe I'll post this like sometime this week. But for part two, it will take me a while again because, you know, Anthony and I are we're very busy at home. We're very busy parents. Yeah. So uh, everybody basically I think has time to – comment because what, what i think what we're going to do is that for part two uh there are certain things that anthony wants to discuss and i think yeah. they're great topics and then for the third installment is we'll do a q a right yes. okay so basically f starting this episode in the next one maybe if, if you guys want to start posting some questions then anthony and i will answer them or do our best to answer them the third installment yeah. so but Anyways, we've both got to go feed our babies. Yeah. Babies right. for you, baby for me. It's an adventure. For now. Life is an adventure. <laughs> okay, Anthony, thanks. Thanks again. Take and uh, stay safe, and all of you stay safe. See, I love you. Stop this get fight. Stop this get
I do think that there's a reason why people are like, Zoom is the new hotness, and people are like, what's Skype? Old people use that, right? <laughs> it just happened that this was what was on my phone.